Okay, so this week's course is called Woodstone Meadows. It is part of the Massanutten Golf Complex. So it is just southeast of the infamous mountain course at Massanutten. And as such, it is a mellow version of a mountain course, a real mountain course, but it is still somewhat hilly. It is definitely not a flat course. It is not really steep or anything like that, but or really tight in most of the holes. Certainly, it's actually fairly open, but it's definitely not a flat course. It, it has a decent amount of water on it. It has a decent amount of elevation changes across the holes, a fair amount of waste, definitely some tree cover, not a whole lot of tree cover, but some tree cover, definitely. But it also has some mountains in the background, which is nice. You know, it's not bad. But it also has a neighborhood, the Massanutten Resort Complex, around it. It, it. Unfortunately, it is essentially a neighborhood woods course that isn't very woodsy, woodsy or woody, but it doesn't have a lot of houses. It has a lot of condos. And so one of the, the big problems with this course is not only is it a housing sort of resort slash, I wouldn't say country club, but definitely sort of a condo environment. Let's put it that way. It also has a fair amount of activities and stuff going on. Uh, there's a couple of uh, activity centers and so forth that are on the course or, or right next to the course as you go towards the entrance of the area. And there is a lot of traffic on around in and around this course. So it is unfortunately, I would say right up front, it is at least a B star course. It's it's not a bad course. It's definitely a, a good course. The official golf now statistics are that it's a slope 129 course. It's 6,400 yards, and it's par 73, and it's a course rating 70.5 course. Now I, I was a, about right with my guess of what the slope rating was. I didn't know before I went out there. The website says that the course is 5,500 yards. It is an executive 18 course, which means it's not very long. doesn't have a lot of par fives. It has some par fives, some par fours, but mostly it's, I would say, oh, easily there's nine. Let's say, I'd say about nine par threes on the course and then a mixture of par fours and par fives. Par fives are all under 55, or sorry, 550 yards. And the par fours are somewhere between 350 and 400 and so yards. There are some nice holes on this course that don't definitely, I want to say to give this course credit, it's a nice course. It's a nice layout. The course is in decent shape. It's got some good challenging tee shots, some good challenging approach shots, certainly some water in play here and there. And it does fill the course. So you, uh, there's OB that's in play on a number of the holes. Certainly, it's not an easy course to play. I mean, it definitely earns the slope 129. But the problem with it is, on the other hand, you are almost constantly having to deal with traffic. There are some holes where there's no road noise and no road traffic or anything like that. But, you know, you go two or three holes and there's holes where literally there are cars driving almost right next to the green. There's a fair number of tee shots where there are cars on both sides because it's in an intersection in like the the corner of an of an um, intersection there's certainly sections of the course where there are uh, the main road is going right by that area and there's a lot of cars uh, and also you know there's a lot of noise from the activities facilities and so forth where people are just not really caring that there's somebody playing golf you know next to that facility or next to the parking lot so don't be surprised on this course if you will see or hear or experience a fair amount of noise, okay? Let's just leave it at noise. From people, from people honking their cars, from people driving by, motorcycles riding by, and revving their engines, you know, the, the party here, party there, and, and people, you know, honking their horns at pe people going and coming from the party and so forth. And then just basically people driving by the entire scene and just saying, hey, I got to be Joe Jackass and rev my car or motorcycle engine and let everybody know I'm here, you know. Let's, you know, let's get this party going, you know, kind of thing. And it, it doesn't really mix well with a golf course. So you're going to 
basically have to deal with, I mean, you're just gonna have to deal with it if you play this course. It's an, it's a, a fairly noisy, intrusive and disrespectful environment to play golf in. However, the course is actually not bad and it's certainly worth playing. I, I would say it's not nearly as tough as the mountain course is, which is a lot of course, okay? I played it once and I, I remember it fondly. It's, it's a lot of golf course to play. So there's no question that it's easier. This course is easier than the mountain course there. Some of the holes have a similar layout, but in general, it's a very different course than the mountain course. And if you have ever been anywhere near Mass Nutton or you've been on Mass Nutton on the, uh, the property, you kind of know what I'm talking about in terms of all the other noise and stuff. And it, it, there are holes on the mountain course that are very similar to the same, uh, have the same problem as the holes on, but it, it just is more intense on this course because it's not as big and it just doesn't go running off into the woods like the mountain course does. While at the same time, the mountain course does a fair amount of condos on the course and you get this kind of ghost phenomenon where there's houses you really can't see because they're camouflaged um, up in the woods. They're, you know, they're, they're woods condos or cabins or whatever, but you can hear the people talking in the cabins, in the woods. You just can't really see them. On, on this course, it's a similar effect, except you know they're in the condos. They're in the condos right next to you. They're in the cars passing by. They're on the parking lots where people are having cookouts in the parking lots. You know, it's just not anywhere near a, a golf course. There's a golf course in the facility, but it's not like there's a facility associated with a golf course. Now, don't get me wrong. It has a decent little bar on, on the course at the clubhouse. It's a separate bar and snack stand from the actual clubhouse. And there's a nice driving range there. There's a, a nice putting green there, but it's just, it's basically just a loud environment. To, no one seems to really have a filter or a, a, a mute volume or anything like that. And on top of it, some of the worst things that really irritated me about this course is the marshal just kept cycling around and around. It's like every time, every two holes, I would see the marshal. And then, you know, it finally got to the point where like the third time I said him, I said, you know, hey, how's it going? You having a good time riding around? Or I didn't say anything to him at all, right? And I just drove by him. But I was getting somewhat irritated by the fact that every other hole, the marshal would be coming down the cart path towards me while I'm either playing an approach shot or playing a tee shot. The first shot, the first uh, green, the marshal and the cart lady parked next to the green while I'm, you know, I'm like, what the hell? You know, there's somebody up there parking face to me. I don't understand this whole thing with people thinking that it doesn't bother someone playing golf if they're in their view, but slightly off the, 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 fair, the course. They're, they're on the car path, not on the green, so it's okay. I'm like, look, Mr. Marshall, if you're listening to me, please don't sit next to the green or in front of people who are playing and stare at them while they're trying to play. That's just JV League stuff, okay? No one with any sense on a golf course sits in front of the people playing up and just waits for them to get up there to where you are. Do them a favor, go past them and look from behind. Okay, don't sit, and anyone listeners, don't sit in front of somebody while they're trying to play up on a course. It's just the worst thing. It's, it's distracting as hell. It's, it's rude as hell. It's, you know, we are not out playing, you know, PGA tournaments. People don't want to deal with someone sitting in their shot or near their shot or whatever. Okay, so that was one thing. It was not just... The marshal that was doing it, the cart girl would do it. There were people walking on the on the cart path, just like it was an exercise course. You know, while there's signs on different places when you off when you come off the road, saying you know this is not a public exercise facility. Please do not walk on the golf course during play. You know, and whatever. And and I passed seven people who just came strolling down the car path while I'm, I'm trying to play. So it, it's not the most polite, respectful, quiet, peaceful, golf oriented facility. You got you to take that right up front if you're gonna play this course. And yes, it's Saturday, yes, I understand, you know, a lot of people are out and so forth, 
but they're not supposed to be on the course. That's the whole thing. This is the whole issue with playing golf is you are not supposed to have to get into an argument or a fight or a lecture or a confrontation or anything with someone who's not playing but around the course, but hanging around the course. It is a golf course. And if people don't understand and respect that, it becomes a true pain in the ass and you're wondering why you're even there. Okay? And that's how I felt. I mean, I honestly felt that way. And and the fact is only the fact that it had some good holes made me want to continue playing it after like the second time that it happened. I'm, I'm coming up on a tee box and some guy is driving a cart down the fairway. He's got some kind of claw. I don't know if he's looking for cans or looking for balls or looking for what, but whatever. He's sitting in front of the tee box. You know, I'm just looking at him and he, you know, I said, well, you know, I, I walked up to the top of the hill. I'm making an excuse for why I'm looking from the, the white tees and I'm going to play the blues because I couldn't really see. And of course I could have seen, but I saw him first. So I didn't go to the tee box. I just went ahead and went to the white tees in which on one hole are above the blues and waited for him to get out of the way, you know, literally. And he's like, oh, just go ahead and do whatever you're going to do. I'm like, why would I want to hit a shot while you're sitting in the fairway 50 yards in front of me? Why would I want to do that? Just oblivious. So now let, don't get me wrong. There were people who were oblivious there and there were people who just didn't give a shit. And there were people who didn't realize how rude they were being. And there were people who almost were challenging people to say something to them about it. Okay. Um, I met people, I, I, I had this experience with people at the facility where they were cooking out in the parking lot next to the fence, next to the green. Okay. And I'm worried about not hitting the ball past the green because there's a line of cars right there. There's a whole parking lot right there. And I didn't want to carry a ball over the, the green into the cart. It's of course I get up there. Hey, you know, there's 10 people up there chatting and talking and, and laughing and giggling and all kind of stuff. And not a goddamn one of them shut up, shut up to let me play that green. Not one of them, you know, just like got my, got my balls and chipped out, put it on the green, put it out and got out of here without a word. Cause it was like, I knew what I was dealing with, you know, when, when people are rude next to a golf course, it, it is either ignorance or nonchalance or a borderline, you know, I'm a badass and I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. If you don't like it, that's tough titty. If you really want to start some shit about it, we'll go, you know, we'll go head to head. And I, why would I want to deal with any of that? I didn't come out and pay 50 bucks and drive out for two hours to play this course to get into a fight with somebody in a golf course. And, and this is the thing. I think when they're already there and they're having fun and doing whatever they're doing, why would they stop for someone who's playing golf, who's going to come through for 30 seconds or a minute or two and then leave? Because well, why, why would they do that? Because that would be polite. And they're not going to be polite. It's just how it is. So that's one big strike I have to give this course. It's not just that it's surrounded by condos and surrounded by people who are making all this kind of noise and playing music out of the back of their condos and talking or whatever. It's not just that. It's also that they don't really give a damn that people are playing the golf course and they're not going to be quiet for people who are playing. They're going to do whatever the hell they were doing before they got there. And the person who's playing the golf course is just going to have to deal with it. And, and that I can tell you from long experience is not the case for most, for 95% of the golf courses out there, that is not the case. It was the case in this course. And it reminded me a lot of courses that I have literally abhorred playing that course because of these people, of this kind of personality, where it's like, F you, whatever, you play your game, whatever, we're going to do our thing. And, you know, that's... You know, every, I, I'm supposed to be happy with them making a lot of noise next to a golf course while I'm trying to play. Basically like that. Okay? That's basically what the attitude was. And I, I, like I said, I can tell you that 99.9% .9 of the golf courses I played, that is not the case. And so I cannot make an exception for this course in terms of rating it.
if it was not a good course and it did not have some definitely good challenging holes, I would never come back and play this course again. I had enough trouble with the mountain course with like the handful of, of holes that were like this. The tee boxes that were right next to somebody's tee boxes and greens are right next to somebody's condo or whatever. The holes that you could hear people talking all the way down the hole, but you couldn't even see them. But the holes where people would come out and walk their dogs on the hole, you know, there was enough of that in the mountain course. It was at least 10 times worse on this course. Okay. Having said it, it's pretty much all I can say. Now, other than that, yes, it was a nice course. Yes, it was a picturesque environment. Yes, it was decent. I mean, but how much crap do you need to ruin it? You know, how much do you need? I would say this course had almost enough going on around the course where I would never recommend it to anybody to play it. However, I will recommend it to people who don't have a problem with that because it was a decent course. It absolutely was a decent course. And I got on it for $50 because you have a summer discount going where instead of $75 for 18 in a cart to play this course on a weekend, it's only $50. That made it intolerable at that price to, okay, marginally acceptable at that price. Some people don't have a problem with that. The, the whole crowd that goes and plays cart music in their carts and drives around and they'll come up and they'll have two people playing music in two different carts and, and keep leaving it playing while they're next to a green or next to a tee box or whatever. You know, that crowd, I think, wouldn't have a problem with this course at all because that's how they are. So that's not going to be a problem for them. You know, and, and, and so for a certain niche of player, someone who's looking for a different type of challenge, okay? Someone who's looking for an environment where they can be loud and no one is going to really get upset about it because there's a lot of other people at the course being loud. That's fine. And, and certainly someone who wants to play a course that's within two hours of DC, this course absolutely, I think it, caught, it took me less, just about two hours to get back from the course. I stopped at McDonald's and then came back and I still was here in maybe three hours altogether. So not going to say more than that. I mean, it's just, it's just a one-off, I think, in that regard. It's not the only course I know like that, certainly, but it is one of the few that are this obnoxious and as such i will give it i'll give it a, a b i wouldn't want to come and play golf again in this kind of if i ever play golf again in an environment like this i would be as unhappy as i was this time and on the other hand it's convenient it's not way out in the middle of west virginia or way out in the middle of, of pennsylvania or something like that it's not north of dc north of baltimore north of frederick which is just a pain to get to I mean, it, it's out 66 and down 81 for like an hour on, on each hand. And, you know, it's just not that hard to get. That's one of the reasons I chose it is because I knew it was going to be easier to drive out 66 and down 81 to Harrisburg than to drive out 66 and drive up 81 to Hagerstown and then go into Pennsylvania to play other courses. So definitely, I usually don't do a review right after I get off a course for this reason because I'm still a little upset at the things that upset me and usually it boils a little bit, but this time I just want to get this over with. It just, I, I literally don't want to talk or think about this round anymore. Just east of Harrisonburg, southwest of Luray, in the Massanutten, you know, it's maybe one time, you know, it's not bad playing one time, a decent B course overall altogether.